Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech, and in this video, we're going to be talking about toasters. I mean screensavers. We're going to be talking about screensavers. I got the inspiration to do a video on this topic a few days ago while I was sort of pointlessly going in and out of different window settings out of nothing but what could be described as boredom. And that's nothing too unusual. People can find inspiration where you would least expect it. Take for example Jack Eastman, the engineer who wrote the code for probably the most iconic screensaver ever. He got inspired simply by looking at a toaster. Flying Toasters is a screensaver module that was released by Berkeley Systems as part of the famous After Dark screensaver series. More specifically, it was introduced in the After Dark 2.0 pack and featured 1940s-style chrome toasters with bird-like wings flying across the screen while being accompanied by pieces of toast. As the story goes, Jack Eastman came up with the idea during a sleepless night while he was wandering around his house trying to think of an engaging animation for After Dark 2.0. I wandered into the kitchen and saw a toaster, he said, and my bleary mind put wings on it. I ran upstairs and sketched a few black and white animation frames in an icon editor and coded it up that night. Flying Toasters was born. Of course, this was not the first screensaver ever to exist. Screensavers appeared in the early 1980s as programs that would blank the screen or fill it with moving images or patterns when the computer is not in use. At the time, most computer screens were based on cathode ray tubes or CRTs, and this technology had an annoying flaw. When the same still image would constantly be displayed on a phosphor-based electronic display, such as the one CRTs had, the properties of the exposed areas of phosphor coating on the inside of the screen would gradually change, leading to something known as a ghost image or screen burn-in, which is permanent. Initially, the main purpose of screensavers was to prevent this from happening. Allegedly, the first screensaver was created by software developer John Soka, who is best known for creating Norton Commander, and who also came up with the term screensaver. The screensaver he wrote for the original IBM PC was named SCRN Save, and it simply blanked the screen after three minutes of inactivity. It was published in the December 1983 issue of Softalk magazine. Of course, this was more than two decades after American science fiction writer Robert A. Heinlein gave a description of something rather screensaver-like in his 1961 novel Stranger in a Strange Land. Opposite his chair was a stereovision tank disguised as an aquarium. He switched it on, guppies and tetras gave way to the face of the well-known windchill Augustus Greaves. You can find this quote quite often in articles about technologies being predicted before they came into existence. Now whether or not it's technically correct to use the term prediction in this specific context, one thing is for sure, Heinlein did give quite an accurate description of a particular style of screensavers that was quite popular when screensavers were a thing. And that, however, is not today. A few days ago, I created a community poll in which I asked you guys, do you use a screensaver? To which you replied, On a serious note, out of more than 7,000 people who casted their vote, 78% answered no, and only 22% answered yes. And the results were no surprise. Long gone are the days when screensavers were a necessity. Modern computer screens have come a long way since the 1980s and are not very likely to be affected with the same severe burn-in problems that CRTs and older plasma screens once had. That by no means implies that the problem is completely gone, but with newer technologies, we've simply managed to find newer and more efficient ways of countering it. In fact, compared to older models, even newer CRTs are much less susceptible to burn-in thanks to positive changes like phosphor coating improvements. LCDs, on the other hand, are generally not affected by permanent burn-in. However, they do have their own equivalent of this problem, and it's called image persistence, which is luckily not permanent in most cases. OLED displays are a whole different story though, as they are very susceptible to their own type of burn-in. Currently, OLED displays can mostly be found on devices like smartphones and TVs, but TVs display moving images the great majority of the time, while smartphones simply blank the screen, usually after seconds of inactivity. Potential burn-in is also known to be countered by moving the image in a way that is practically unnoticeable to the human eye. Now, even though there may not be such a need for them nowadays, that doesn't mean that screensavers are completely gone. 
When it comes to desktop computers, today screensavers are mostly used for decorative purposes, but can also be utilized for password protection and even for activating a useful background task like a virus scan. Most modern operating systems include power saving options which can be adjusted to turn screens off after a specified period of inactivity, which not only reduces the possibility of burn-in and image persistence, but also saves precious power. Due to the changes in technology, this has become the more practical way of saving a screen, and many agree that the term screensaver has actually become somewhat of a misnomer. Still, if you ask me, screensavers are pretty cool, and if nothing, at least they'll be around just for fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.